All right. Who is ready? Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Glacier Ridge campaign. This is our Monster of the Week campaign. Monster of the Week, of course, is a book by Michael Sands. Um, there's two different books, two or maybe even three, I don't know. Uh, but he wanted a game that uh, matched up with his favorite Monster of the Week series. Um, Monster of the Week, if you're unsure, is like Supernatural, uh, X-Files, um, Doctor Who. What was that? Scooby-Doo? Yeah, Scooby-Doo. Um, all of those types of games, they all are basically Monster of the Week games. Um, but that being said, um, this is our own take on it. Sorry, I just am trying to make the music a little quieter. <clears throat> I noticed in the last game that the music was very loud, so just try and do that. Anyway, so this, like I said is our Glacier Ridge campaign. Uh, Glacier Ridge is a fictional town in the Northwest Territories in uh, Canada. Um, the Northwest Territories near Nahani Valley National Park. Uh, the closest town to the Nahani Valley National Park, I believe, is Fort Simpson, but that's still like five or six hours away. So this is only a two hour hike away which is why I made up this town so that I didn't have to have them going like five or six hours every day trying to find this place. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. I'm trying to think now if there's anything else I need to mention before I go into the recap. I don't think so. Um, so, last week, uh, we didn't have Wyatt. So we just based that Wyatt, for the first time in his life, actually listened to something that uh, he was told to do. Because um, Frankie told Wyatt to head back to the lodge, take Emily with him, and get her out of there. So Wyatt listened and took her back to the lodge. Um, anyway, uh, they kind of stood there for a little bit. The gruesome scene of the two dead hunters with their insides hanging all the way down to the ground up in their hunting blinds. Uh, and they uh, had a little bit of a discussion about what was going on. Uh, Frankie and then Victor ended up going to the cave uh, to check if there was more tally marks. And sure enough, there was. Uh, Frankie and... Not Frankie. Uh, Maxine and Charlie uh, called the sheriff and the sheriff and Olivia ended up coming to the scene. Uh, the sheriff then said that those guys were in the cell. They had like just seen them in the cell, blah, blah, blah. Um, they ended up splitting up. Uh, I think you guys went back to the lodge and started discussing a little bit. Then you got a phone call from the sheriff stating that uh, they did not have the whereabouts of the people since like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., uh, but they had already they had put food in the cells of these people, and there's no reason why they would have put food in the cells of these people if there was nobody in the cell. On top of that, Elias also was missing. Um, then, from there... Sorry, I'm just going to have to go back and see what I'm missing here. Um, I think that was all part of part one. One sec. Uh, oh, I forgot one thing. <clears throat> While Frankie and Victor were at the cave, as they were leaving, uh, Frankie stumbled upon a journal in the woods. A journal that was detailing basically like they were a monster hunter previously um, and it was written by an E Blackwood uh, in the back of the book there was a map 
and on the map, like in the margins and stuff, it was talking about like the hidden bunker and stuff. Um, then they went back to the lodge. Maxine let Tom know about what was going on in the woods. Tom had some theories. Um, then while they were discussing with Tom, Frankie hid the map in their, in their pants. Um, the party was kind of talking about different possibilities and that's when the sheriff called them. Uh, Frankie and Charlie then went to Thompson's repair shop to talk to Oliver about his brother. Um, then while they were there, Maxine, oh, Victor, um, uh, was like, where's the map? The map is missing, blah, 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 because Frankie had hit it. So he went searching for the map. Then Maxine called Victor and was like, you got to come back. I don't feel safe being by myself. Uh, Victor said he'd be half an hour. So Maxine headed to Glacier Ridge Press to ask about like archived newspapers and things. Uh, then when they met back up, Maxine and uh, Victor talked about some theories that Maxine had. Um, and then they went to the sheriff's office to have a meeting with the sheriff. Um, Victor ran into his nemesis, Olivia. Um, and had a wonderful conversation with her. Uh, and then they met with the sheriff. The sheriff kind of went over the coroner's report a little bit. And you guys uh, left with a bit more information. Uh, then Frankie and Charlie headed to the apothecary. Specifically because the book, the journal they found, was written by E. Blackwood. And in town there is a Blackwood's apothecary. So they went to speak with Cassandra. Cassandra listed off some relatives that she has that might be the E. Blackwood. Then, finally, finally, the party headed to the old mill. It was mentioned in the second episode, and it only took eight more episodes for the people to go there. Um, oh, you whined last time, too. What? You whined last time, too. We we got there eventually. Sure. Uh, and then while they were investigating the mill, uh, they came across some documents stating it's like why the mill went under. It was the two new businesses, blah, blah, blah. Then they were hearing some noises. They were hearing they felt like they were being watched. Um, and then they uh, uh, Frankie went off by themselves um, and found a janitor's closet, got themselves a pipe wrench. Uh, and then they uh, closed the door to the janitor's closet and there happened to be a figure standing behind the door. The figure kind of talked to them a little bit, um, stating that they wanted these halls um, or he had wanted these halls uh, as the harbinger of chaos, embodiment of darkness itself. He was consumed by the shadows, lost darkness, and now the darkness threatens to consume us all. Um, and as Frankie was staring at this man, um, sh uh, they saw a slight resemblance to Oliver and discovered that this man that was in front of them is Jason. And that's where we ended so, the episode. Had, because you talked about him being like elongated and stuff. Was yeah, he his, just a tall person, or he's just? No, his body's messed up. Like, all right. Uh, Rachel wasn't seven feet tall. What? But she is currently. Um, and this guy wasn't seven feet tall either, and his body has been messed up going back to his human form i shouldn't be telling you this um but yeah did you happen to mention victor's new romance with olivia no i didn't that he's gonna ask her out i did not mention that because i didn't think that was actually true <laughs> Anyway. All right. So you guys are standing in front of Jason. 
Okay, I thought it was just Frankie. Yeah, but remember she called like out. We... She like screamed, and then you so had brought up. Oh, you we had went, brought we up that you luck? were heading towards. Yes. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure because I know that we were asking if we could hear Frankie or not. Oh no, I think <laughs> they had said. Yeah, I think they. Yeah, they called swore out. Or something. Yeah, they called out when he appeared. Correct. Okay, so we're coming around the corner because they were off in another room? Uh, in a hallway. Okay. So this is, this is what we see. This giant tall thing. He's not, Ooh. he's not super tall. Um, but his body is messed up. Like, one right. arm is longer than the other, one leg is kind of dragging behind as he's walking. Oh, I guess I can send a picture to you. One second. Oh, you can, you can go ahead, I'm just looking for the picture. Okay. So we're, are we flanking? Frankie? Either be coming up on their sides or from behind, yeah. Yeah. And they've got a pipe wrench in their hand, that was correct? Loud. Uh I don't know if they put it in their hand or behind them or what, but who is that? What is um, we're going to go ahead and say that right now Frankie is, um, frozen in, in fear. Okay. Um. Okay, I saw, I saw, oh yeah, because Oliver was the drone guy, right? Yes. Oops. Gonna be and a lot you said he resembled, he resembled... Oliver, correct? Correct. Or he, Jason. Yes, there's a fa Jason? familial resemblance. Correct. I think this might be Jason. The guy that was missing? Yeah, his brother, Oliver's brother. Oh, I thought it was the frozen lady that was doing all this stuff here but this is another person okay frankie looks like she's are there okay victor do you want to just get in front i don't know yeah frankie I'll... seems to be a little bit upset i'll grab him one sec <laughs> does he seem like he's does it seem like he's being aggressive no uh, I don't know if you recall me stating in the last, he looks very, his eyes are sunken. He looks very regretful and remorseful and kind of like defeated. Okay. Is your name, are you Jason? Can you, can you speak to us? I... I used to go by that name. Can we can we help you somehow? There's nothing you Is can there do anything for me you at this from... point. I'm too far gone. Your brother is looking for you, Oliver. We've met him. He's very concerned about you. Unfortunately, his brother is dead. I am but a shell of what I used to be. Yet, yeah. someone who can never go back to the world. Uh, how did this happen, Jason? How, how did you get like this? Well, it all started with the altar in the woods. 
stumbled upon it one night, drawn in by the whispers of promises it made, promised me power and control and the ability to reshape the world according to my desires. I just lost my job and was about to lose my home. It whispered answers to questions I didn't even know I had, filling my mind with visions of glory and conquest. I thought I could resist it, but the darkness it offered was seductive, intoxicating. It wrapped itself around my brain, suffocating out my will and making my desires known to me until I could no longer tell the difference between reality and illusion. I became the vessel through which its influence spread, the harbinger of chaos and despair known as, well, the Polar Shadow Stalker, as some call it. But I, we can't, we've come across that altar. We, I was, I have to say I was tempted a bit myself and I did touch the altar, but I was able to, I was able to pull away, but I'm hoping we can help you. We're trying to help Elias. He, he was also being affected by the altar, I think, but I'm sure that we can help you. There's got to be a way. You're not as far mm. gone as Rachel. Have you met Rachel? I'm not going back to it. But this form it's left me in is twisted and I'm not able to become what I once was. You don't understand. It twists your body into the form it needs. So you're able to pull, like, obviously, because you're not like the frozen form like Rachel. You had the strength to pull away. My liberation from the clutches of the Polar Shadow Stalker <clears throat> was an unexpected twist of fate. It was sparked by the actions of Rachel Thornton. When she touched really? the ancient altar hidden deep within the woods, she too was seeking power and control, and unwittingly just triggered a chain of events that would change the course of my life forever. As she became the new vessel for the darkness, taking on the mantle of the Polar Shadow Stalker, the hold that the shadows had over me began to weaken, their influence waning with each passing moment. It's as if her ascension to power severed the connection between myself and the darkness, and I started to transform back. Okay, well... If you're starting to transform back, maybe just time, but it's like you can't you can't it's stay been out here by over yourself. A year. How and you long haven't do you changed any more? No. How long do you think it's going to take? I think this is the end. Well Don't give up, Jason. It's like I know your brother loves you and we'll do anything that we can to help you. It's like, I know Frankie seems to be a little bit mute right now, but but it's like we're all we're all willing to help. We're trying to we're trying to rid the town of this this hold that this altar seems to have on people. People are people are being hurt, Jason. And it's like we're trying to help as much as we can. And we yeah. We'll do whatever we can to help you. But it's like, please don't give up. Well, I've been transforming for a year and a half, and it's hard to think that this is going to take, this is going to go away anytime soon. Well... We'll try to do anything that we can to help you because it's there's got to be some way of we've we've actually hidden the altar away. Victor, right? That's Yeah, we've we've got the altar in a safe place. So it's like nobody else is going to be able to touch the altar. 
All that means is gonna Rachel try... is going to stay this way forever. What would happen if we destroy the altar? I don't know that you can. If it has the power to do something like this, or what you've seen, mm -hmm. Rachel, do you really think that there is a chance of you being able to destroy it? You I think it wouldn't be able to defend itself? When you were... When you were the... Way the frozen guy. Were you aware of what you were doing? Like, did you know? And Or does it just take over completely? Unfortunately... Oops. <clears throat> I was aware of the actions, but the darkness consumed me, clouding my mind and twisting my thoughts until I could no longer make a difference between right and wrong. I became a puppet of the shadows, carrying out their bidding with a chilling sense of purpose. There were moments of clarity, fleeting glimpses of the horrors I had unleashed upon the world. But no matter how hard I fought against it, it always seemed to win out in the end. And that's a burden I have to carry with me for the rest of my days. The knowledge that I was once this thing that did these horrible things. Lived off fear. Tried to terrify those that once loved me and once were my friends. I... I understand. I understand, but it's like... Scaring and... Well, what Rachel's done has, is horrific. But... It's like, the thing is, it's like, this thing had a hold on you. It's like, you can't. I realize you said you were tempted and you, you enjoyed the power it gave you, but it's like, and I realized that Rachel becoming more uh, pulled in by it is what actually stopped. But it's like, at least you've seen. And it's like, yeah. And the fact that we've gotten hidden this thing for now. But yeah, we're trying, like I said, we're trying to find a way to uh, get rid of this from this town, It just in general. We don't want it to be anywhere, but it's like it has affected this town. And we want to help you. And how do you plan on doing that? What have you done so well, we far? At this point, mostly just investigating. It's we've 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 like I said, we got hold of the altar, and we're trying to help Elias. And we've ordered some stuff, and we're hoping that we can, what Victor, uh, like we can Rachel help her. Yeah, we want to see if we can capture Rachel. And. What are your thoughts for doing that? Uh, we were thinking that uh, heat, heat and light would counter counter her strength. So she wouldn't be able to teleport. Frankie, do you think you're okay now? Huh? It's like, I know you're stunned a bit. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, I uh, disassociated for a second. Yeah, we kind of, we kind of figured there. There was just this Jason... stop on a tricycle. I'm just, sorry. She went. 
they went to a better place just for a brief moment. <laughs> it's like I went I went to my happy place, but now I'm back. Jason Jason, yeah. we're I'm I'm trying to explain to him his brother misses him and that we want to help him as much as we can. And he's he doesn't think that any that there's any hope for him really but and he said that he said that it was rachel uh becoming the main vessel is that how he referred to it the main vessel for the altar he didn't say main Whatever vessel he just said altar. he just said vessel okay sorry yeah but he she became the predominant one so I mean, it's like yeah. he stopped he stopped he stopped transforming because Rachel became the main and I transformed back with all these issues. Yeah. So I'm just hoping that we can encourage him to that we're trying to help. But um, I mean you're I mean, yeah, I mean it's been what, three, four years and um your brother still part of him still has hope that you're you'll come home. His brother is dead. But you're not. I am not his brother anymore. I am as I stated, a shell of the man he once knew. Do you not think that he'd still want to see you, though? Would you? Frankie, ju really Frankie just saw him. And That's... they were talking to him. He he was talking about you. Earlier today, he was telling me about you. I understand that. But the man that he remembers is not the man that he will get. Do you not understand no that I'm not the... Always the man that you remember I, I think he would be able I think he'd be glad to at least say goodbye to you don't you think a goodbye is better than left with zero answer would you rather tell him what happened or do you want it to come from someone like me I would much rather come think... from someone like you do you see what has happened to me do you see what the transformation has done to me uh I don't think you were here for when I stated this, but, like, one arm is longer than the other one. Uh, one of his legs is, like, dragging behind his body. Um, I'll explain a little bit why. Uh, so, Rachel is not over seven feet tall, but the Polar Shadow Stalker is. Um, so, in order to achieve that, the body has to go through a transformation and this transformation back to human doesn't go well obviously and his body is deformed and misshapen and kind of scary looking i mean there's worse guys in florida i get what you mean though i'm just being a smart ass The brother that he once knew died when he touched that altar. And I am no longer that man. Okay, so... Uh... Oh, I am so sorry. He's going to hate me for this one. Um... What were you saying, Gramps? Fire? Light? Oh, Gramps. Victor? Yeah, got it. <laughs> Gramps? Yes, fire and light. Heat. Heat and light. Okay, Jason, would any of that do the trick? In Please. short, yes. But it's more complicated? Not necessarily. It's fueled by darkness and despair. 
In my experience, the shadows Maybe. draw strength from fear and thrive in environments of darkness and cold. Heat had always been an issue for me. I was never able to manifest during warmer weather, and my powers were always more potent in the darkness. However, like all creatures of darkness, the weaknesses would be to light and heat-based attacks, which could weaken its hold and make it so that the powers aren't as strong. Maxine, you were gonna say, or yeah, yeah. The thing is, it's like we've got the altar. It's like that's what they're talking about is trying to capture Rachel. But it's like maybe even the destruction of the the altar will even. I know you said it's been a year oh. and a half, but it's like it might help with the with your body transforming back, or or and maybe it won't be exactly the same. But it's like. Yeah, I know that, you know, oh, if Maxine, I had a sibling, I'd want to see. Smashing the altar. No, no, but just, well, I if don't know what like, these guys are planning on doing. This? Or does it just stop other people from turning into this? Who are we talking to? Me? Jason? What was the question, oh. sorry? About smashing the altar, would it? I have no idea. I don't think you could. Why? It's just rock. You think the rock forces? that can do this to a person, or that to a person. You tell, you're telling me that a rock can do that? If you pick up a random rock in the woods... It can do this sort of I thing? I mean, I think it has to do with all of the stuff that's, like, etched into the thing. So you're but... telling me that that would not have some safety protocols etched in as well? I don't know. I've never screwed with that stuff. I doubt it, and if it did, it'd probably be like in the movies where someone, like, hits something and they go flying. Or, you know, kind of like that. Then I guess we'll see. I mean, it's worth a shot if I can break the damn thing. Well, you just got yourself a pipe wrench, so... Maybe it... The thing is, it's like, maybe, maybe the the altar's just a conduit. It's like, we don't know if it's like it'll break the, the spell, the... The curse. It might, not the curse. Break, it might not break that, but in theory, if I can smash it, it might stop more people from becoming... Well, these guys already got... Like, they've already hidden it, so it's like that was... Victor and yeah, but it plan. doesn't mean that nobody's ever gonna find it. Oh no, no, no! I know, but so Charlie think... and Victor were making out like nobody be able to get at it for a while. Well, where it is right now, where it's safe, like yeah. it's not. But I wouldn't want to leave it there. Like I'm on board with, right? All right. Well, then we can just go there and try and smash it. Well, we also have the doctor coming that we. Right, because we were going to show her the... You never got an email back from them yet, anyway. No, I know, but how okay, long has so it actually been? Uh, of the a thing. day. Yeah. Okay, so we take a bunch of pictures of the thing. We can look at it digitally, and we don't have to take anybody near it, because it seems like everybody wants to touch the thing. Just because it's curious and you don't know what it is doesn't mean touch it. You poke it with a stick first. Like the bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless they're like completely mutilated, but if it's just like someone lying there, you gotta kind of make sure. But it's like, yeah. If we I, I, things and stuff, somebody eventually would have been able to decipher it. But now we also, but we already know what it does to people. So this way. We just don't have to worry about doing more people. You Did tried Charlie taking pictures, pictures of it. Of you tried taking pictures of yeah. it and it didn't work. Yeah, because that's what I was just going to say. I think we did try. I don't remember. When Charlie and I, when yeah. Charlie and I were there. Charlie tried I taking pictures, but it. then he etched it. Oh, right. 
Yeah. Maybe it was the... I can't believe... I'm... No, never mind. I'm not going to say that because I can't believe that I would ever say that. Like, out of game, you can't believe in game you would say that? No, that was in game talking in game. In game, in game. <laughs> Sometimes you need to talk out loud. That's what all talking is. To yourself. <laughs> there you go. Just uh, throwing things at the wall. What do you guys want to do? Also, um, actually, is that all you need from me? Can I go back to my resting place? What are you uh, doing for food out here, Jason? Rats? He's dead. I don't really eat. I'm not dead. He's not dead. He just He's just dead to... He said he was dead to... I thought he was dead. No. His former self is dead. Are dead to others. I'm assuming it was. Would uh, do you think more food would help help you? I lived in the woods for a while before I touched the altar. I don't think more food would do anything for me. I know how to hunt. I know how to fend for myself. So did it? Did it call you to it? I kept hearing voices in my head. And as I got closer, they got louder. And so as you... I touched it, I heard more promises of answers to questions. I heard promises of power and ways of changing things to make things yeah. right yeah. again. I... I heard the same thing, but I, it was the only reason I was there though, was because a lot, or the only reason I even touched it was because Elias, the only way he would trust me is if I would touch it. But, but you're saying that you heard voices well before you came across the altar, like just in the woods? No, nearby. There was always a fog nearby. I heard the voices, but all I'm saying is I, I, I'm talking to Victor now. It's like, would people still be drawn to that? Like the altar that you guys hid somewhere? Well, you said it was making promises to you. No, no, no. I realize that, but I'm saying... I'm just worried about other people coming across this. Or does Rachel need the it, altar it in order? In the middle of the woods where Elias was and nobody had seen him forever. So I'm not worried about that. Okay. Well, it's like, look, at, look how it affected Jason. I know that he's broke his spell with it, but, and now Rachel has become. Well, we can check the email. From the doctor. I, the I just want to be clear on something. Jason yes. did not do anything to break his spell. No, no, I get that. Okay. That it was because of Rachel, correct? Correct. Rachel touched it. Rachel he no became, longer was yes. a monster. Yeah. His spell yeah. is broken. I get that. I get that. Thing. I'm not I'm not saying Only because she took it over. Okay. Yes. I get that part. But is it drawing anybody else? Like that's it's like because he was already he was already in contact with the altar, and then Rachel came along. So is it drawing Can't others? Do that regardless. Can I remind you of something? Pardon? Yes. What? Elias is no longer in the police station. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. Are all are they being drawn by this? Are others being saying, drawn by it? I'm not going to do it regardless of if it has a vessel or not. It seems like it's drawing specific people. It seems like it's not a regular occur occurrence. 
it seems there's targets. Because so nobody, you think that nobody they, uh, else had heard about that. Uh, and then Rachel touched it. And then once Rachel touched it, Elias started hearing stuff. <coughs> say that again? What did you just say? Well, it's information you shouldn't know. No, 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 but say that again. Oh, say it again? It's information that you shouldn't know? Specific people. Yeah, the crazy ones that are out in the woods with it. No, not necessarily. First it was Jason, then it was Rachel, and Elias said he was hearing voices. I read through all of his crazy ramblings. Right. And before it was Jason, it was somebody else, because it's been going on for decades, so... Yeah. But only Rachel has escalated, correct? Well... That we know of? Because we don't we get scared. Elias. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So should we go to where you hid the altar? Like, does he have... Yeah, I don't... I don't... If he's going back to the cabin, he's probably going to look for the thing. You said that we're yeah. going to see why. Which means he might be trying to touch it. Or Rachel has teleported him out of there. And killed him? And frozen him or something and turning him into the one. Who knows? I don't think freezing him turns him into one. No. If she makes him touch the altar, it will. But is that her ultimate goal? Don't know. No, she looked pretty upset when he she was in the K the jail cell with him. Right. If it was just to get him scared or like the way, the way she tried to ignore me kind of came off as like a she had a vendetta. Jason walks away. Bye. <laughs> He's like, I'm bored with this conversation. Well, we weren't talking to him anymore. We were just... Yeah. Um... Alright. Well, we got two options. We can go back to the cave and see if Rachel has transformed back and see if she's like... See if she's like, uh... Jason... That would tell us whether Elias has found the altar or not. Or, or we, we can go directly to the altar. Yeah, from touching the altar. Exactly. I will also remind you that you only had the three tally marks when you went to the uh, cave. Right. Well, why don't we go back, go back to the lodge, make sure Wyatt's okay too. It's like, I... Wyatt will be fine. As long as he doesn't leave again he'll be fine I don't well, think it, it would take five seconds to check on him we gotta go get something to get out to the to the uh, altar altar anyway so uh, or do you want to go to the cabin Well, we need to go to the cabin. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether, but I'm I'm saying we can go back to the lodge. But I'm saying, yeah, we need we need the side by side to get out to the altar. Yeah. So we got to go by there anyway. You can check on Wyatt quick and then just go. Um, no matter what Wyatt says, I don't think he should go near the altar. <laughs> That seems rude. Just by the way. All right. 
Are we on board then? We'll head back, see what's up. Yeah, I guess. I'll let Wyatt know that he can't come with us out to the cabin or whatever. So mad at me for looking at him. He wasn't mad about that, no. The fact that I'm in pain and you're annoying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, what? Sorry, talking to myself again. That's okay, fine. that's okay. Um, okay. I'm so to the mountain. I'm communing with nature. That's <laughs> She's Frankie... putting her hand on the ground. <laughs> Frankie is druid. <laughs> on a tree We trunk. didn't read that in her profile, but now we know. The tree trunk and it's just like, yes, yes. <laughs> and then they find out everything. Because trees know everything. 